Dr. Eric here to talk to you about prostate enlargement or BPH. I'll discuss what BPH is and the various ways it can be treated. As we men age, nearly all of us will begin to experience the effects of an enlarging prostate. This condition is called BPH, or benign prostatic hypertrophy. The prostate is an organ about the size of a walnut that sits at the bottom of the bladder. The urethra, or tube that you pee through, runs right through the middle of the prostate. As the prostate enlarges, it may restrict the flow of urine as it pinches off the urethra. Men with this problem may experience a slow stream, having to push to urinate, a urine stream that stop, stops and starts, incomplete emptying of the bladder, frequent urination, urgency of urination, and getting up at nighttime to urinate. If untreated, this can lead to dysfunction and eventual failure of the bladder, as it has to work harder and harder to push urine through a smaller and smaller tube. Imagine the difference between blowing up a balloon the normal way versus blowing it up through a straw. You're going to tire out much more quickly with the straw. An important point to understand with BPH is that it's not actually the size of the prostate that makes a difference, but how the prostate is growing. You can have a very small prostate, but growth internally and have a big problem. Or you can have a huge prostate, but all the growth is on the outside and you pee just fine because the tube in the inside is still nice and open. Once a man has been identified as suffering from BPH, we then have to identify how bothersome the symptoms are. Most commonly, a questionnaire such as the AUA Symptom Score or the International Prostate Symptom Score will be used to grade the severity of the disease. Other tests may be used as well, such as a bladder scan to evaluate how well the bladder empties. An analysis of the urine should always be performed as well. Sometimes a camera exam called cystoscopy is used to look at the prostate and the bladder from the inside. An ultrasound of the prostate can also be a useful tool to measure the size and the shape of the prostate. A test called urodynamics which studies the function of the bladder and how much the prostate is squeezing is also sometimes utilized. For men younger than 70, a PSA test should also be done to evaluate for prostate cancer. Depending on the results of the above testing, a treatment plan is then put together. The first option is called watchful waiting. This is for men who have minimal symptoms. This involves just monitoring the problem and treating if and when it becomes more bothersome in the future. The next option is medications. There are three types of medications that are used for BPH. The first and most common is called an alpha blocker. This medication works on the smooth muscle fibers in the prostate to relax those fibers and open the passageway through the gland. The second medication is 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. This type of medication works by reducing the conversion of testosterone to DHT, a more potent version of testosterone inside the prostate gland. The decrease in DHT causes the prostate to shrink in size. This medication is only effective in men with large prostate glands, and it takes a while for it to work. The third type of medication is a PDE5 inhibitor. This class of medications is known best for helping with erectile dysfunction, but has been approved for daily use to improve prostate symptoms as well. These medications can be used individually or in combination, depending on the patient. If medications aren't working or the side effects are too bothersome, then we look to surgical options. 20 years ago, there were basically two options for prostate surgery. Now, there are nearly a dozen different options, each with its own pluses and minuses. But this gives us much more fine-tuned management options. 
with which surgical option is the right option often comes down to the size of the prostate. I liken it to Goldilocks. There are prostates that are too big, too small, and just right for each of the various procedures that we have. For small prostates, less than 30 grams, there are two options, TUIP or TWIP and Urolift. Transurethral incision of the prostate or TUIP is a procedure where a camera is inserted through the penis and an instrument is used to cut two deep grooves into the prostate tissue to relax the tissue open. This is done in the operating room under anesthesia. A catheter may be used for a day or so afterward. The Urolift is a procedure that utilizes a special instrument that deploys pins into the prostate to pull the tissue open. Imagine the prostate as window curtains that are closed. The Urolift opens the curtains and ties them back to keep them open. This procedure can be done in the office or in the operating room, and it's done with a camera through the penis. In most cases, no catheter is required afterward. The next group of options is for medium-sized prostates, usually those between 30 to 80 grams in size. For these prostates, there are more options. These include Urolift, TERP, Resume, and Aqua Ablation. I already mentioned the Urolift earlier, so go back in the video if you want to learn more about that one. The only difference here with the Urolift now is that the prostate is larger, so it's going to require more pins to get the desired outcome. TERP, or transurethral resection of the prostate, is a procedure that has been around for decades. It's commonly called a rotorooter job since it, that gives men a general approximation of what the procedure is. In the operating room, with anesthesia, a camera is inserted through the penis and a special loop is used to carve away prostate tissue until the prostate is wide open. There are several flavors of TERP, which really vary solely based on the instrument used to remove the tissue. For example, a green light TERP uses a special laser to melt the tissue away. The plasma button works similarly. These are commonly called photovaporization. A catheter is usually left in for about three days afterward. Sometimes an overnight hospital stay is necessary. Resume therapy is a newer but an excellent technology. The resume procedure is usually done in the office. A camera is inserted through the penis and steam is injected in several areas of the prostate. The steam causes the prostate cells to melt away over the course of the next several weeks. A catheter is usually used for about three days after the procedure. Aqua ablation is also a newer technique and at the time of this video is not widely used yet. It is a very promising technique that involves using a high pressure jet of water to strip away the prostate tissue under ultrasound and robotic guidance. This is done in the operating room under general anesthesia and requires an overnight hospital stay. A catheter is also used for several days afterward. I think the procedure is best compared to using a hose to clear away a pile of dirt from your driveway. The complication rate is a bit high in most studies so far, so that will need to be improved before this technology becomes more widespread. The next group is for large prostates, typically those larger than 80 grams. For these prostates, there are typically two options, simple prostatectomy and holmium laser enucleation. Some urologists will consider Urolift, Resume, aqua ablation for these prostates as well, but those options tend to be less effective in larger prostates. A simple prostatectomy is a surgery that is done through the abdomen. You can think of the prostate as an orange, and in this surgery, the peel is opened and the pulp is scooped out and then the peel is closed. A large amount of tissue can be removed in a very short period of time. This surgery usually lasts around 90 minutes. A catheter stays in for seven to 10 days and an overnight hospital stay is necessary. The holmium laser enucleation of the prostate or HOLUP is a very similar procedure. 
except instead of incisions in the abdomen, the procedure is done with a camera through the urethra. Using a laser, the prostate is cored out from the inside in one big ball and then pushed up into the bladder. A second instrument is placed through the camera called a morselator, and that chews up that ball of tissue and sucks it out. An overnight hospital stay is required, and then usually the catheter is removed in the morning. Both of those surgeries, simple prostatectomy and holop, are done in the hospital and under general anesthesia. You may have noticed in this discussion that I left out two treatments, microwave therapy and needle ablation. The reason I left these out is that at this time, most urologists acknowledge that those options are significantly less effective than the other treatment options I already discussed above. Most urologists no longer offer those procedures, the microwave therapy and the needle ablation. I hope this has been a useful and informative overview. Please click the subscribe button to stay up to date on my health videos and leave any questions in the comments section below.